It's February 1st, 2009, Super Bowl 43 at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. The Steelers are trailing the Cardinals with 43 seconds left in the game, but they're within striking distance. You may know what happens next, but every big moment is meaningless without the little ones that came before it. So let's rewind. The Cardinals, in the franchise's first ever Super Bowl appearance, are clinging to a late lead. But the real surprise is that they are in this game at all. Since the AFL-NFL merger, the Cardinals have won only one playoff game, a matchup against the Cowboys in the 1998 NFC wildcard. Since then, they haven't even finished a season with a winning record. That is, until this year, when they finished 9-7, and just enough to take the NFC West. They kicked off the postseason with a wildcard win over the Falcons, their first playoff win in a decade, then followed that up with a commanding 20-point win over the two-seed Panthers and a 32-25 win at home against the Eagles, making the Cardinals the second team in NFL history to advance to the Super Bowl with a 9-7 regular season record, the first being the 79 Rams, who lost to the Steelers in Super Bowl XIV. But here they are, an underdog to make the Super Bowl, in position to win it, thanks in part to the unlikely career of this man, quarterback Kurt Warner. Warner went undrafted in 1994 and ended up in the Arena League, where he became a two-time first-team All-Arena player for the Iowa Barnstormers. In 1997, he got a tryout with the Bears, but a spider bite he received on his elbow during his honeymoon prevented him from attending. Then, at the end of the 1997 season, he signed a futures contract with the St. Louis Rams and spent time in Europe playing for the Amsterdam Admirals before joining the Rams as a third stringer for the 1998 season. But the roller coaster had only just begun for Warner. In 1999, an injury to Rams quarterback Trent Green left the starting role open for Warner. That season, he was named Super Bowl MVP in the Rams' victory against the Titans. Warner continued to play well for the Rams, but as the years went on, injuries and a decline in production led the Rams to release him, four years after their Super Bowl run. He was picked up by the Giants, named starter, and then promptly benched for rookie Eli Manning. In 2005, Warner signed with the Cardinals, and in 2006, he was benched for rookie Matt Leinart. Then, in 2007, an injury to Leinart gave Warner a chance to showcase his talents once again. He was chosen as the starter for the 2008 season over a now healthy Leinart, and finished the season second in the league in completion percentage, second in yards, third in touchdowns, and third in passer rating. And his performance in the playoffs has taken the Cardinals here, to a lead with under a minute to go, in his third Super Bowl appearance, but his performance has also almost doomed them. With 18 seconds left in the first half, down by three and on the two-yard line, Warner threw it over the middle and into the hands of the Defensive Player of the Year, James Harrison. Harrison had a long road here as well. In 2002, he was signed to the Steelers' practice squad as an undrafted free agent, but struggled to make the active roster. He was released three times before signing with the Ravens in 2003. Baltimore then sent him to play in Europe before ultimately cutting him. In 2004, Steelers linebacker Clark Hagens broke his right hand in a weightlifting accident. So for the fourth time, the Steelers signed Harrison, who was considering retirement at the age of 26. With improved play, Harrison made the final roster. Four years later, here he is intercepting Kurt Warner in the end zone and taking it back for a Super Bowl record 100-yard touchdown return. Harrison is going to go all the way. Instead of taking the lead, or at the very least tying the game with a field goal, the Cardinals entered half, down 10. The Steelers had done what they did all season, strangled teams with their defense. James Harrison, along with players like Troy Polamalu and Aaron Smith, led a defense that was atop the NFL in almost every stat, including fewest points and fewest yards allowed per game. And at the helm of all of this was defensive-minded head coach Mike Tomlin, the youngest coach to ever lead his team to a Super Bowl. Having left his position as Vikings defensive coordinator two years prior, Tomlin filled the void left by legendary coach Bill Cowher's retirement. But when Cowher initially retired, rumors swirled that his replacement would be either offensive coordinator Ken Wisenhunt or assistant head coach Russ Grimm. Well, before a decision was made, Wisenhunt took a different head coaching gig, one with the Arizona Cardinals. Once the Steelers chose Mike Tomlin, Grimm joined Wisenhunt in Arizona. The two began using their experience with the Steelers to craft a contender. And as they stand across the field from their former team, a championship hanging in the balance, they know they wouldn't have had a chance to be here without their star receiver, Larry Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald was the number three overall pick in the 2004 draft, 
In his rookie season, he became the youngest player to record two receiving touchdowns in a game at 21 years and 110 days old. But it wasn't until 2008 that he and his Cardinals would have a winning season, thanks in part to his league-leading 12 receiving touchdowns along with 96 receptions and 1,431 receiving yards. But this six-yard reception with 10 and a half minutes remaining in the fourth quarter was only Fitzgerald's second reception of the game. Down 20 to seven, with time slipping away, the Cardinals needed their star to step up quick. Following a 22-yard grab by J.J. Arrington, that's exactly what happened. Fitz turned this pass from Warner into an 18-yard gain, which he followed up with this six-yard reception before finishing off the drive on a leaping catch in the corner of the end zone, bringing the Cardinals to within six. And with his father, a sports writer, watching from the press box, Fitzgerald tied Jerry Rice's record with his sixth touchdown reception of the postseason. Then with three minutes remaining, an unsuccessful Cardinals drive ended with a punt, pinning the Steelers at the one yard line. As they cling to a lead, it's a tough spot for Steelers QB Ben Roethlisberger, who's had no real trouble delivering since he entered the league. After getting drafted eight spots behind Larry Fitzgerald in the 2004 draft, Big Ben won Offensive Rookie of the Year. He followed that up in his second year by winning Super Bowl 40, albeit with the lowest passer rating by a winning quarterback in Super Bowl history. And his 51 wins through his first five seasons are the most by any quarterback in NFL history. But at this point, none of that matters. With their backs against their own end zone, they need to find a way to create some space. A second down run by Willie Parker is very nearly a safety. So on third down, Roethlisberger decided to throw the ball. His options were Steelers all-time leading receiver Heinz Ward coming off his fifth 1,000-yard season and third-year wideout Santonio Holmes. He called Holmes' number, who came up with a beautiful catch. But there was a holding penalty on center Justin Hartwig in the end zone. It's a safety, and the score is now Pittsburgh 20, Arizona 16. The kickoff set the Cardinals up at the 36-yard line, with just under three minutes remaining. Still down four, they needed a touchdown to take the lead. On second down, Warner went to his star receiver. A 64-yard touchdown gave the Cardinals their first lead of the game, and it gave Fitzgerald sole possession of the single postseason receiving touchdown record in the process. Arizona has the lead! Big Ben and the Steelers now had one final chance to march downfield with two and a half minutes left on the clock and claim the championship. Roethlisberger hit Holmes for a 14-yard gain and started to claw back some momentum. It was the sixth reception of the night for the wideout from Ohio State. Drafted in 2006, Holmes had an up and down rookie season. He did, however, end it on a high note. The last play of the year was a 67 yard touchdown in overtime, which dashed the Bengals' hope to make the playoffs. Holmes then broke out in 2007, leading the Steelers in receiving yards and touchdowns. But in 2008, Holmes ran into legal trouble and was benched for a game following an arrest for marijuana possession. Once back in the lineup, he was a pivotal part of the Steelers' offense. Now with the game on the line, Roethlisberger hit Holmes again, this time for 13 yards on third down. Then on second and six from the 46 yard line, one minute remaining, Holmes' number was called once again. A 40 yard catch and run brings us here. 43 seconds away from Ken Wisenhunt and the Arizona Cardinals completing a 13 point comeback win, the largest in Super Bowl history against his former team. From an undrafted Kurt Warner winning his second Super Bowl, and Larry Fitzgerald using his sticky fingers to hoist the Lombardi Trophy. Or, we're 43 seconds away from Ben Roethlisberger's second Super Bowl in five seasons, and the Steelers' NFL record sixth Super Bowl, led by the youngest coach to ever win one. Welcome to a moment in history. Washington outside left. Roethlisberger has time. Throws to the back of the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown! Santonio Holmes was named Super Bowl MVP and then later joined the Jets, which is where you probably know him from. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe, and then plan out the rest of your life and make sure not to deviate from it at all. Thanks.